National Weather Service in Wilmington has issued a severe thunderstorm warning. Jeez. Holy crap. Jeez. What the hell? Holy crap. So so Jesus I had only done a brief cursory check of the models and forecasts before the event, considering that there was only a marginal risk issued by the Storm Prediction Center and the lack of a strong forcing mechanism, like a cold front. Oftentimes during the summer, you have these high cape, low shear environments that produce brief pulse storms and pop up showers that aren't often considered severe. However, this day was an exception. Take a look at this sounding from the 16Z run of the HER model. This forecast sounding, which I found in Sharpie's sounding archives, was generated near Lunken Airport around the same time as this cell occurred. Similar to other late spring and summer days, there was plenty of instability for that atmosphere to use, with between 2,000 and 3,000 joules per, per kilogram of cape and steep low-level lapse rates, or the change in temperature with height. In addition, with nearly 1,000 joules per kilogram of decape, or downdraft cape, the sudden and intense downburst I experienced towards the end of this video seems reasonable considering strong potential downward momentum due to the steep low-level lapse rates and dry air aloft seen in the skew t diagram. However, another variable that contributed to the strong updraft and persistent propagation of the storm was the wind profile. The speed shear or change in wind shear with height 
was certainly adequate for the creation of supercells, with exactly 40 knots of effective bulk shear. In addition, there was adequate directional shear as seen in the hodograph in the upper right. Sure, while it seems rather modest with only 151 meters squared per second squared of storm relative helicity up to 3 kilometers above the ground and 77 meters squared per second squared of effective storm relative helicity, that curvature could have aided in its longevity. Also note the sudden veering just above the surface. In terms of the threats from the supercell, damaging hail seemed likely considering abundant cape within the hail growth zone between negative 10 degrees Celsius and negative 30 degrees Celsius aloft. However, with modest shear, large hail was not likely based on the sounding. As mentioned earlier, damaging wind from downbursts were also likely based on decape values. Overall, this supercell verified pretty well. Up to half dollar size hail was reported a few miles to myself around the Cherry Grove and Beachmont areas, with several reports of wind damage and even a gust of 61 miles an hour recorded within the downdraft near the same area. While nothing too impressive, this was quite a memorable event for me. I was in awe seeing that incredible wall cloud develop.